Hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's 10 o'clock, so I'll get started. Uh, I want to say thanks to our media partners for joining us here in our conference room, and thanks for everybody online for joining us live. Um, so I'll just get into it. Uh, what I'll do is I'll start with a summary of the dry season, the May through September dry season that I recently concluded, and then I'll go into the outlook for uh, the wet season, which runs from October through next year. So starting with a, a summary of the dry season, uh, most locations had near to above average rainfall. Uh, unfortunately, that's not what the forecast called for. We had uh, a uh, forecast for below average rainfall at the start of um, at the start of the dry season uh, back in May. And um, there are a couple of reasons um, for that uh, that forecast uh, error, I guess you could say. Uh, one was that the wet season started um, we had an extension. We had a late start to the dry season. We had uh, the latest Kona low in at least 20 years. So that brought a fair amount of rainfall to the state. And then later on in August, we had Hurricane Hone, which you know, we can't foresee that uh, far in advance, but that did have a, a significant impact in terms of rainfall across the state of Hawaii. But uh, once June rolled around, then the dryness really kicked in. And, and by late June, we already had uh, drought conditions uh, reported across the state. And then the drought uh, spread and intensified through July and into mid-August. And so by early August, we had severe drought, which is D2 on the US Drought Monitor map in all four counties across the state, and even extreme drought, which is the D3 category in the Drought Monitor in the leeward areas of Haleakala and Maui. Um, and what that did was in addition to the mainly agricultural impacts that we saw, we had some uh, water impacts as well, uh, from, especially for those on uh, water catchment and uh, who depend on surface water diversions, uh, on, especially in Maui County. And then there was a significant increase in brush fire ignitions, um, especially in July, we saw uh, quite a number of fire ignitions, uh, including pretty serious fire on the leeward side of Kauai um, that uh, caused quite a bit of concern. But as I mentioned, in late uh, August, we had Hurricane Hone come around. And so that eased the drought um, in leeward, um, forces of leeward Maui, and then eliminated drought on the Big Island because the Big Island got quite a bit of rainfall, 20 to over 30 inches of rain, especially in, on the east and the uh, southeastern flanks of, of the island. And so that really uh, knocked drop down on that island. But once uh, December, uh, excuse me, September rolled around then things dried out quite a bit again. So um, Maui County, Kauai and the leeward parts of Oahu uh, started to dry out and, and even now into, into October, we're seeing drought starting to expand and intensify again. Um, windward Oahu and most of the big island actually had uh, wet conditions during September. So they, uh, those areas did not see uh, an expansion of drought. So looking at the numbers, we ended up with the ninth wettest dry season in the last 30 years. Uh, that wasn't quite uh, where I was expecting in terms of the statistics, but you know it is what it is. Um, we had some uh, curveballs thrown at us uh, in terms of, of um, the rainfall, but we still ended up with significant dryness in parts of the state. So looking forward, uh, the outlook, for the wet season, which runs from October through next April. Uh, NOAA's Climate Prediction Center uh, said that La Nina is favored uh, to emerge in the tropical Pacific by the uh, end of November, and then is expected to persist until spring of next year. Uh, we've had a slow start to the wet season. You know, October has been uh, fairly dry across most of the state, um, but the climate model consensus does favor wetter than average conditions, uh, especially starting from December and continuing on through April of next year, November being kind of a transition month in terms of rainfall. And so with um, <clears throat> La Nina in place, the rainfall distribution can be affected by the strength of the La Nina. If you have a moderate to strong La Nina event, then uh, there's a higher uh, chance of a higher probability of more trade wind days than usual during the wet season. And so that'll tend to focus rainfall more on the east facing windward slopes. And when you have a weaker La Nina event, you can have more low pressure systems around the state, more Kona lows, for instance, and that'll produce more leeward rainfall. 
Um, the probabilities uh, coming out from the, the climate models favor a weak La Nina event. And so the effect is that uh, with both windward and leeward uh, rainfall uh, enhanced, ex we're expecting drought conditions to be completely eliminated by the end of the wet season in, in April. Uh, some other impacts uh, would be lower probabilities or lower likelihood of uh, giant surf events. And then with the enhanced rainfall and you know, re um, the reduction of uh, dry forage or you know, more growth um, in the vegetation, then that greatly re reduces the uh, chance of uh, wildfires during this time of year, which is a good thing. Um, on, on the bad side, looking way down the line, Perhaps next summer with the, the increase in fuel loads, depending on what happens next summer, you know, there may be a higher risk for um, more wildfires. But as of right now, you know, it's, it's, it's too far to know what the, the climate picture is going to look like next summer. It's way too early. But uh, if we do see the enhancement of rainfall, then you know, we're going to have a lot more fuels uh, available. Um, in terms of uh, preparedness actions, uh, if you look on the media advisory, page two has a lot of uh, information out there. But you know, essentially, you know, hand in hand with the enhanced rainfall, you're going to see a lot more frequency of, of flash flood events, especially from December onward, uh, if the prediction um, comes uh, comes true. And then you know, much more impacts in terms of you know flooded roads, closed roads, uh, you know, impacts to events that you may have scheduled during during the wet season. Uh, more chance of thunderstorms and, of course, lightning uh, associated with it. So just you know, be prepared if you hear thunder, see flashes of lightning, then you know, head indoors and, and just be safe. And then also hand in hand with these types of events, uh, there is, uh, although not common, there is a chance that we could see severe thunderstorm activity. You know, having large hail, strong gusty winds, and even uh, tornadoes. It's when we have these types of, of events, then you know that's something you always have to be prepared for and, and be aware aware of. Um, and that's that's the outlook. Uh, as I mentioned, there are some links on the second page of the media advisory. It's also uh, linked on our should be on our webpage, um, the top news portion. Um, but that's all I had. So take any questions you may have. But in addition to the, the audience, uh, type in their questions, anybody online, or raise your hand if you don't need them in the meantime. So we'll go to questions in the room. Uh, I, know, I know you kind of touched on it, but the, the dry season was wetter than normal. And then you were forecasting drought con concerns to be ending in the spring. Is that? Right? Or even sooner than that, you know, depending on how much rainfall we get in, from December onward. But I'm, I'm just saying that by the end of April, I'm, I think that map will be completely empty you know, in terms of the, for the drought monitor map. Yeah, so we shouldn't um, have any drought left over by the end of the wet season. If the forecast you know, pans out, you know, there's always, especially with uh, you know, some of the guidance, that, what I didn't mention was some of the guidance that, that we we're seeing actually indicates that we may not even enter a La Nina, that it may stay ENSO neutral. Uh, if that happens, we, Hawaii tends to be wet even during ENSO neutral conditions. So either way, I think you know, we will still be uh, pretty wet uh, across the state. So the question from Eli Pace of Maui News, do you have any specific forecast for South Maui? Is the area still in extreme drought or do you see conditions? Uh, conditions should improve. I think right now uh, we have the drought monitor has severe drought in leeward portions of, of Maui County. Uh, that could get a little worse before it gets better. We'll, we'll have to see. But once December rolls around and then for the next continuing onward through April, uh, I think con conditions in terms of drought will improve. And so by the end of April, drought should be eliminated. At least that's what the yeah, you know, the probabilities to, you know favor right now. Okay, next question is from John Burnett. Uh, John, your microphone's unmuted. Go ahead. Hi there. How are you doing, Kevin? Um, Hi, John. Uh, thanks. The the Kona Coffee Belt um, is kind of the opposite of the rest of the state and sees its wet season in the summer and its dry season in uh, the in, in in the winter months or or, or it's starting now. Um, 
How was this wet season and what, what's the forecast for its dry season? I would anticipate at least with a weak La Nina event or if it doesn't pan out, if it stays insulin neutral, then in both cases uh, with the higher chance of more like, like Kona lows and low pressure systems that they would tend to have enhanced uh, rainfall on the on the Kona side of the Big Island. Thank you. The follow up question from Maui News. Uh, thank you. Do you have any advice for residents regarding the drought? Uh, with the drought, uh, you know, it, it at least until the, the wet season, the enhanced rainfall really kicks in. You know, it. Um, Conditions are pretty dry out there, so take precautions in terms of, you know, not uh, avoiding situations where you might cause ignitions of wildfires. Um, and in terms of if you're on, you know, it still pays to conserve water as much as possible, especially if you're, for sure, if you're on water catchment system, but even in areas such as upcountry and then areas of West Maui where they depend more on surface water diversions, uh, surface water sources, then, um, you know, it, it always pays to help, you know, help the Department of Water Supply conserve and, and uh, ensure that they have adequate uh, water supplies uh, for the, at least for the next few months. And then if the wet season really kicks in in earnest, then, you know, things should improve, um, you know, in those areas. That's what we have. Online so far. Okay. Um, so for uh, for surf on a La Nina year, I know you kind of talked about mm -hmm. it. Can you just briefly explain what you had forecast as far as swells go during the winter? Yeah, during I, I guess in you know historically with La Nina events, it's kind of opposite with from El Nino. El Nino, you tend to have a higher likelihood of of giant surf events, especially in January. And with La Nina, it's kind of the opposite, where we have a lower likelihood of of giant surf events but you know like i mentioned um we've had cases with la nina and then we've had you know episodes of giant surf but but i just looking at the overall distribution or probability or likelihood that you, you have a lower chance yeah good okay if there are no questions no other questions uh thanks everybody and be safe out there uh, be it either with dry conditions, the wildfires, all stay tuned to the weather service and the emergency management partners. And uh, of course, if the wet season and flooding uh, takes place, have a plan, uh, prepare in advance um, and know, know your routes if you're in flood prone areas and things like that. And don't drive across flooded streams or hike across, uh, hike across uh, swollen streams. Okay, thank you.